perilymph fistula is a leak of perilymph at the oval or round window of the inner ear. Originally recognized as a complication of early stapedectomy operations, it easily comes to mind for a patient presenting with subtle vestibular symptoms with hearing loss or tinnitus following barotrauma from diving or flying, an airbag explosion, or from a direct blow to the ear canal. However, it can be the result of relatively minor head injury, often multiple, which has been long forgotten. The symptoms are usually attributed to mild brain injury. Chronic perilymph fistula symptoms are fluctuating unilateral postural instability, nausea, mild motion sickness and subtle cognitive difficulties. This video presents a patient who exhibited all these features after several head injuries. It concludes with references to the work of clinical and basic science investigators that illustrates the mechanism of and the cause of the symptoms of chronic perilymph fistula. A 26-year-old female presented saying, I've got giddiness. I'm all off balance. I haven't had balance for a long time. She kept staggering to the left. Her left ear with normal hearing would block and ring. There would be periods of nausea for days and motion intolerance for days and a sensation of falling when traveling in an elevator or on an escalator. Once in a noisy bar next to a loudspeaker, she suddenly felt sick and fell over. Intense symptoms began nine months prior when she had slipped over and hit her head when chasing her dog. There is a suspicion that there had been earlier, milder symptoms. About seven years earlier, she had been hit by a car on her motorcycle and had similar symptoms six months after that. Four years prior, she had a fall under her horse. Um, you've had this dizziness for about nine months now. How did it start, or seem to start? I slipped over and hit my face on the corner of a desk when I was chasing my dog. Right. And I got a big black eye. Right. Yeah. And then after that, what did you notice? Um, first of all, I noticed that the ear went deaf, like it had, um, like I had cotton wool in it. I could hear my own voice really loudly, but it was hard to hear anything else. And that which ear was that? That was in the left ear. Right. And then after that? And then the giddiness started. Right. So what, is that something you have almost every day? Most days, yeah. yeah. And when, when you wake up in the morning, do you know that it's there? As soon as I wake up, I know right. it's there. And and on, you have good days and bad days? Yes, I do. And on a bad day, what's it like? On a bad day, it depends. If I wake up with my giddies, I know I'm going to have a really bad day. If I wake up with my ear blocked and deaf, then I know that I'm going to go giddy by afternoon, by lunchtime. Right, and how does it affect you in your everyday um, movements? And I just can't function. I'm hairdressed and on my, on my feet, and I can't focus. I lose my eye focus and I just feel really sick and I don't, I can't concentrate. So you feel nauseated mm. a lot of the time? Yeah. When you're walking along uh, in a straight line, do you, uh, is your balance off to one side? Are you, do you have a good side and a bad side? Yes, I do. Yeah. I drift off to the left. Yeah, right. So if you had to walk along and turn quickly, would you have to? I wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't be able to? No. Uh, what about travelling in a car? I don't like going over hills or anything like that. In a lift? No, I don't like going in a lift. What does that do to you? It feels like I'm going to fall over when the lift moves up and down, like when it's coming to a stop. I feel like I'm going to fall over. Um, you mentioned that this affects your concentration. Yeah. Is, is that, can you just talk about that a bit more? Um, when I've got it, I, I've had trouble stringing a sentence together, like I'm sort of away with the fairies, I can't. I can't really talk properly. Now, I try and describe to people what's going on, and I sort of, um, uh, and I can't remember what I was going to say, or. What about remembering? Or I just can't be bothered. I just <laughs> don't want to talk. Remembering uh, facts and figures. Is it harder to do than it? Yeah, it is actually. Yeah, I just can't function. I just lose the plot. Now, we. We uh, discovered that you've had other head injuries. Yeah. In fact, uh, this goes back quite a long way. 
you had a head injury in 1993. What, what happened there? I was hit by a car. Yeah. I was riding a motorcycle and I was hit by a car. And my motorbike helmet was broke. It was um, smashed. Right. Were, you, were you knocked out? Um, well, I was, I think, only for a short time. It was, it was all very fast. I don't really sort of remember a lot about it, really. Did you have dizziness after that? It didn't happen until about six months after. Right. Um, and then you've had another head injury. I was riding a horse and the horse fell down on the, went down on me and I landed on the top of my head. That was about four years ago? Yes it was. Was there any dizziness after that? Um, no, I don't think so. I just had an incredible headache for about a week. So prior to September of last year, nine months ago, do you think you had it? any inkling of what you've got now? I knew there was a problem, but not as bad as what it is now. And if you had to have this forever, how would you feel? Not very good. I can't go to bars because the music brings it on. Um, I can't swim because going down into deep water, underwater, I get an earache. Um, yeah, no, not very good at all. This shows her inability to stand steadily with eyes closed or blindfolded, to accurately maintain balance on quickly stepping sideways to the left, and to be unable to remain jogging on the same spot when visual fixation is removed. The recording was on videotape, a left tympanotomy via an endural incision. A perilymph leak was found at the fistula antifenestrum of the oval window and repaired with small pieces of connective tissue and tissue glue. Uh, so it's now uh, over four years since they had, had the operation. Yep. Um, can you remember how things were back um, four years ago? Uh, I saw you in January of 2001 when you had this dizziness. The operation yep. was in June. Um, and we think that you may have had these things for quite a long time, maybe seven years. Yeah, easily. What, what was it like then? Oh, it was awful. I didn't have any quality of life. Um, I tried to ride horses. I couldn't really ride horses much. Um, I couldn't go out, I couldn't be in loud bars or anything like that because it would just make it a lot worse. Um, basically just anything was an effort. So uh, every, most days you'd have this dizziness? Yep, there would be the odd day maybe oh, one a week that I might get a little bit of freedom from it but generally it was there all the time. So there are good and bad days yes, but on a bad day you would know when it was going to be bad? Oh, definitely. Easily, yeah. Right. And so, when you got out of bed and walking around, what did you notice was wrong? Um, the, first, the best way I could describe it is it felt like the walls were on a lean. Everything was lopsided. 
and it was online. Did you have a good side and a bad side for your balance? Did you have to sort of um, save yourself from um, hitting the wall? Or... Yeah, I did. If I went through a doorway, I would always clip myself. And when I actually had the operation, a friend of mine said to me that it wasn't significant to her before the operation because it was just me. But after the operation, she noticed that when I got out of a chair, I didn't have to steady myself and I didn't stagger. I was able to get straight up out of a chair and walk straight ahead. Did you get nauseated? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, to was, the point of vomiting. Was car travel a problem? It was if it was on hills and a lot of windiness, yeah, definitely. Um, now, had you had some, you'd had some falls from horses? Yes, maybe? and a motorbike accident. Right. Uh, is that seven years before? I can't remember exactly, but it would probably be about that. I was probably 20. Right. Yeah. But soon after the operation, you were able to go up the Sky Tower. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It was great. And although it seemed to take a while for the left ear to feel right again, um, to feel comfortable again, um, how are things now? Oh, perfect. Great. I just, I don't even look back. Not at all. No. And just before the operation, your left ear used to uh, feel not comfortable? To it would block to... and it would ring. Right. And the ringing and the blocking, it would sort of follow in steps, like the ringing. I can't remember whether it was the ringing or the blocking would come first. Um, but yeah, and it would just, mm, couldn't hear anything. I felt like there was water in my ear all the time. Right. So if you still had those symptoms now, how would you feel? I wouldn't be here now. <laughs> no, I... It's that bad. I wouldn't, yeah, no. No, if I hadn't met you, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you now. So it, it makes It ruined my twin teeth, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Travelling in a lift now? No oh, problem. it's fine. I actually enjoy it. <laughs> right, whereas previously? And also escalators. Mm. I never liked an escalator either. Mm. But now yeah, it's fine, absolutely fine. I can walk up, I can go up an escalator with my baby in my arms, whereas there's no way I'd have trusted myself to do that. The references include two other YouTube videos from this department on patients with chronic PLF, the balance abnormality of chronic perilymphistula in a woman after a mountain bike accident, and the balance abnormality and other symptoms of chronic perilymphistula sustained in a train crash, and two publications from this department a balance test for chronic perilymphistula and perilymphistula 50 years of controversy. The symptoms of chronic perilymphistula are a demonstrable unilateral postural instability, nausea, motion intolerance and, often subtle, cognitive problems. It has long been assumed that the vestibular symptoms are due to inner ear endolymphatic hydrops, but it is likely that they are due to chronic otolith organ dysfunction affecting vestibulospinal pathways, resulting in impaired postural adjustment. 
The reference by Brandt is the first and one of the rare to make this observation. The references by Kohut are in regard to unique temporal bone studies on the likely temporal bone defects that lead to round and oval window fistulas, and for the fistula antifenestrum being the usual site for the oval window. The reference by Grimm and Black is the first to observe postural instability and often subtle cognitive difficulties. The references to Smith are in regard to animal and other evidence that a peripheral vestibular lesion can cause learning and likely memory deficits. The reference to Wackham is some objective evidence of cognitive difficulties in patients with otic capsule defects and leaks. Finally, a chronic perilymph leak is a rare example of an unstable peripheral lesion. This implies that, although reasonably rare, chronic perilymph fistula represents an ideal model in which to study the cognitive effects of a peripheral vestibular abnormality in humans.